Hello friends, uh, welcome to the Hindi news analysis or the Delhi news analysis. Uh, today uh, we are going to deal with the news items uh, for that particular date that is 23rd of April 2018. See, so the Minorities Commission uh, has sought the constitutional status uh, so far it enjoyed the statutory status. So, on what pretext is the Minorities Commission seeking constitutional status? So it has decided to approach the government granted a constitutional status to protect uh, the rights of the minority communities more effectively. So what is the significance of uh, granting such a status if it is granted at all? So the NCM uh, will be able to act against the errant officials uh, who would not attend the hearings. Uh, generally, the NCM calls the officials who have not acted uh, you know, uh, in favor of the minorities. And uh, if they are found guilty of their dereliction of the duty, they would be you know, punished um, if constitutional uh, status is granted to NCM. So now it will have the power to penalize or suspend an officer for two or more days, or he might, he or she might as well be sent to jail. Till now, uh, NCM um, uh, did not enjoy such status, uh, constitutional status. Only the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes enjoyed the status. So uh, the power uh, so far for NCM was just as someone. Uh, those officials uh, who have derelicted their duties. Uh, it included the chief secretaries, the director generals of police. Uh, however, when it comes to the punishment part, they had to rely on the department's concern to take ag action against them. So what is this National Commission of uh, Minorities? Uh, the National Commission of uh, Minorities was established under an act of uh, the parliament, uh, that is the National Commission for Minorities Act 1992. The major reason uh, was that uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs felt that uh, uh, there was an insecurity and inequality felt amongst the minorities. Uh, so to address this concern, uh, the act was passed and the commission was set up. The union government over the years has included uh, six religions, uh, religious communities as minorities. It includes the Muslims, uh, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, that is Parsis and Jains, um, in a, uh, Jains being the latest addition. <coughs> the constitution of uh, National Minorities uh, Commission uh, uh, would be done by the central government. Um, uh, uh, the powers on the NCM uh, has been conferred by the in an act itself and uh, the functions are also assigned to it under the act. The commission of uh, uh, the minorities consists of a chairperson, a vice chairperson and five members to be nominated by the central government from amongst the persons of eminence, ability and integrity provided that the five members including the chairperson shall be from amongst the minority communities itself. So what are the functions of the commission? Now, uh, it has to evaluate the progressive development of minorities uh, under both the Union and the States. Uh, it has to observe the working of safeguards uh, provided in the Constitution in regard to minorities and uh, also the laws enacted by the Parliament and State legislatures are working properly. Uh, it is also uh, you know, given the ambit of uh, making recommendations uh, for the effective implementation of these safeguards. It has to attend to specific complaints regarding uh, the deprivation of rights and safeguards of minorities and take up such matters with appropriate authorities. Uh, cause, it has to cause to study uh, you know, the problems arising out of any discrimination against the minorities, conduct studies, which research analysis on the issues related to socio-economic and educational development of minorities, recommend appropriate procedures in respect of any minority to be undertaken by the central government or the state governments, make periodical and special reports uh, in a, to the central government, or uh, any other matter which may be referred to it by the central government. Uh, say, uh, these are the functions of the commission. 
death penalty or the capital punishment are, uh, has been in news as well uh, in, uh, amid uh, uh, rising in, uh, demands for capital punishment for rapists uh, the president signed an ordinance uh, on Sunday that is yesterday uh, which introduces death penalty for those convicted of uh, raping girls below the age of 12 uh, seeking uh, stringent punishment has conveniently sidestepped the more uh, in a important criticism of systematic failures uh, systematic and systemic failures in addressing the increasing sexual violence against women and children. So uh, what has happened is uh, as and when such cases happen, uh, you know, people rise up in arms and they seek speedy justice and a speedy change of laws. Yes, the laws will be changed and uh, you know, decisions will be taken. However, what has been uh, you know, sidestepped is whether the existing frameworks of justice are working properly, the wheels of justice are they moving properly in the di right direction. A particular viewpoint uh, can be emphasized here. Uh, the women's movement uh, has uh, laid a lot of emphasis on uh, the survival of the assault victim and uh, in turn uh, that person has to be uh, in a, an evil to bit the perpetrators. So survival uh, has been the emphasis. Uh, there are numerous instances where perpetrators are killing the victims. Uh, so stringent anti-rape laws are perceived not to be deterrents but measures that further instigate rapists to attack the victims and kill them. Uh, we can contest the stringent law uh, because the assumption that the severity of the law is an adequate deterrent to crime being committed is a highly you know, uh, debatable matter uh, given that the brutal rapes in India have continued to uh, you know, uh, persist uh, despite the enforcement of Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013 that is uh, on the basis of the Nibayab case. Uh, this was a piece of legislation which prescribed death penalty and life imprisonment for sexual assaults. Uh, that result in death and the victim being reduced to a persistent uh, in a vegetative state. So it has not acted as a deterrent and the cases uh, have been uh, have not reduced since then. Uh, what is the reason for this? Uh, uh, there is a patriarchal undercurrent uh, where women's movements across the world have consistently criticized the knee-jerk and the populist solutions to curb sexual violence. Uh, that in a highly patriarchal vein overemphasize the sexual aspect of the assault and reinforce the stigma attached to rape. Such solutions are seen as undermining the needs uh, to address the essential question of rehabilitation as well as the question of uh, complicit rule by the uh, role played by the state agencies in denying the justice to survivors. This uh, critique of uh, capital punishment for rape stems from a, congress, a concrete assessment of shoddy police investigations, low conviction rates, the tendency of hesitation within the judiciary in avoiding severe punishments, and the capacity of stringent anti-rape legislation to enhance the propensity of rapists to murder their victims. So overall, uh, you know, the summary of what this, uh, these paragraphs say is that the solutions uh, which have been offered are rather knee-jerk and uh, the main issues concerned uh, in a, a main issues which are to be addressed or sidestepped over a period of time what is required is uh, high conviction rates so what is to be changed uh, in India's growing rape culture can be best reversed by enhancing the conviction rates uh, uh, this can be done by uh, bringing in reforms in the police and judicial systems and uh, you know, strengthening the measures to rehabilitate, uh, empower rape uh, survivors, uh, uh, more grants or uh, greater allocation of funds are to be made to the states to it, uh, to its setting up of foster courts, uh, crisis centers have to be set up, uh, proper witness protection has to be provided. Uh, more expansive compensation for uh, rape survivors where you know as of now rape survivors have to wait for a long time for the compensation uh, existing child protection services are dismal uh, they have to be looked into the next topic is regarding the commonwealth <coughs>
There was this uh, common health heads of uh, state uh, heads of government meeting uh, it's called Chagam, uh, which was held in London uh, after a long period. Uh, there was a uh, hope that uh, there will be a, a Commonwealth which, which will be rejuvenated, which will come in a new form, a re-energized Commonwealth uh, uh, was in the offing. Uh, what is the significance of this summit? Uh, why was there such limelight on the summit? There were for, uh, many reasons for this. Uh, one uh, reason was that it was being held in the UK. Uh, it is a founder of the grouping uh, of mostly British colonies, former British colonies. After 32 years, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, the head of the Chagom, attended the meeting or the summit, uh, which she had not uh, done so frequently in the recent past, uh, owing to her health. And uh, the members were looking to revive this uh, 53 nation grouping as Commonwealth 2. Point O, I mean, Britain's exit, uh, exit from the EU. Uh, now that uh, Britain is moving away from EU, the expectation was that uh, you know Britain would move closer to uh, the Chagom states, uh, so as to say, the Commonwealth states. It was widely expected that India would also uh, you know, take a, uh, a higher role or a bigger role in the entire in a, a commonwealth and uh, it would help uh, chart a future course for the commonwealth. Uh, this was in, a, in the offing because uh, uh, Prince Charles made a personal visit to Delhi to uh, invite Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Um, so uh, this had raised the expectations in India as well. Uh, Mr. Modi of course attended uh, the uh, meeting and uh, uh, he was the first Prime Minister to attend this meeting in almost a decade uh, in the previous government. Uh, you know, this is a biennial summit, a biennial summit which happens two years once and uh, uh, Manmohan Singh had um, missed out on most of the summits. The outcome, however, has not been uh, uh, you know, encouraging or it was rather underwhelming. It was announced that Prince Charles would uh, succeed his mother, uh, that is Elizabeth II, uh, as the head of the Commonwealth, uh, despite there have been calls for the position to be more democratically shared or rotated. Uh, there were uh, a lot of arguments in the Blue Charter on ocean governance and on Commonwealth connectivity agenda for trade and investment, uh, which could together counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. But there was a little detail, uh, or uh, uh, rather a roadmap, of course, of uh, a trivial nature. UK's Prime Minister also apologised for her government's uh, threat to deport thousands of immigrants uh, about as manual labour in the 1940s on the ship called uh, Empire Windrush from the Caribbean, uh, but uh, she failed to convince most members of the Commonwealth that Britain would reverse its policies on immigration. The UK's hard line on India's uh, Indian illegals, uh, which prevented the signing of bilateral agreement on immigration returns between Mr Modi and Mrs May, to indicates that uh, uh, post Brexit, London is likely to welcome trade and goods from the Commonwealth, uh, however, not in services. Uh, it's a tent on you know, the uh, relationship between uh, India and UK going further. So, India expected uh, UK to have a softer line when it comes to trade and services and uh, people moving uh, to UK for jobs and services sector, but uh, you know, that has not materialized. What can be said in conclusion is that Commonwealth remains a great, great platform for development aid, democratic values and education opportunities, but its relevance is unlikely to increase uh, unless it adopts a more egalitarian and inclusive attitude to its next generation of Commonwealth citizens to partake a purpose of prosperity therefore for this have built. The next topic uh, is the unprecedented crisis which has uh, loomed over the judiciary and uh, especially uh, up around the post of Chief Justice of India. Uh, the process has been initiated by the major opposition parties to impeach the Chief Justice of India, which is rather unprecedented. Uh, it has never happened against the Chief Justice, that is, the process of impeachment has never been initiated against the Chief Justice of India. 
uh, the motion at uh, Rajya Sabha uh, draws its uh, substance or arguments are mainly based on uh, the points raised by four senior most judges uh, who had uh, dissented and uh, who had dissented uh, regarding or uh, no uh, the allocation of cases. So, what is the main charge? Uh, CJI, that is the Chief Justice of India, the Commissioner, uh, selectively assigns the cases to benches of his choice, including a case related to him. Now, uh, the CJS, uh, however, stuck to the point uh, that. Uh, he is the master of the roost, uh, roaster and he has the protect, uh, prerogative to allocate the cases. So uh, there are two sides of the argument here. Uh, you know, the collegium system, uh, which is used for judicial appointments, uh, the Supreme Court has said that it is the consultation with the Chief Justice um, means that the consultation with the plurality of judges when it comes to judicial appointments. The argument uh, that the power to allot cases should be exercised by the Chief Justice in consultation with the senior judges may have some substance from this point of view. However, the counter argument is that it is for the appointment of judges that consultation means consultation with the senior most judges, but it does not extend to you know, allocation of cases or allotment of cases. So. You know, allotment of cases is prerogative of Chief Justice of India. Uh, what is the counter argument? The counter argument is uh, no, it cannot be so uh, because when it comes to allocation of cases, it has to be all the senior most judges coming together and allocation, uh, allocate the cases you know, accordingly. So impeachment is not an easy process. The Constitution, um, you know, rightly has envisaged that uh, the impeachment of superior court judges uh, uh, should include a rigorous political process, uh, which would be driven by the Parliament. Uh, it is like inbuilt safeguards, uh, uh, which includes uh, uh, inquiry by a panel of judges and a two-thirds majority in both the houses. The details of which can be found in the Lakshmi context work on Indian polity. The intention is to provide for both accountability and independence of the judiciary. Neither of these objectives can be dispensed in favor of each other. What is the significance of this master of roster where, you know, what is this post about? Master of roster is a judge appointed by the Supreme Court to list out the allocation of cases to different judges for preventing two different benches from hearing the same kind of case. Last year, the Supreme Court has formalized the convention uh, that the CJI uh, is the sewer generals, that is, he is unique, and hence, he would be the monster of the roster. So, what events have led to this recognition, uh, that is, the formalization of the convention? Earlier in 2017, 14 year most judges of Supreme Court had blamed the present CJI for selectively allotting the cases to preferred benches. In response, the CJI published a new subject-wise roster. This allocation did little to pacify the judges as uh, CJI allocated most important public litigation matters to himself. Following this, a verdict was uh, in a put out uh, to the criticism by uh, declaring that the CJI is only a first among equals as a judge. But the bench also agreed that no one, even the fellow judges of SC, can question the power of CJ as the court's job administrator. You can sense that, you know, uh, there is a sort of contradiction in two statements. Final judgment confirmed that the CJ's dominance over the roster was necessary to protect this SC from anarchy. What are the concerns of the SC judgments uh, over, you know, the master of roster? There is a deterioration in the unwritten and righteous custom that the law of the land is supreme. Concentration of humans purpose on a single person is harmful for the nation and is also against the principles of democracy. The issues triggering these judgments are also concerning as the cases are related to the allegations of conspiracy to bribe charges. Previous norms of pronouncing sensitive uh, judgments by consulting with collegium also will get affected as the CJA will solely decide on cases as well as judgments. That's about it for today. Uh, we'll come up with uh, 
different topics uh, tomorrow, as and when you know uh, the opinion pieces uh, get published. Thank you.